Good morning, Kat. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic and excited to share a conversation with you because you really do bring up a lot of great points in this book and through leadership as well as you put some humor in here. You make it a very real humorous book. Thank you. Yes, it definitely is an entertaining read. Um, <laughs> I tell a lot of very interesting, funny stories in the book because nobody wants to sit and be preached at, right? <laughs> but if you make something fun to read, people want to read it. Yeah, the only thing that's missing from this book is a yellow highlighter because you are you are prolific in so many different areas. It's like, oh my God, she said it, man. Now I'm gonna learn from it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I mean, listen, I, I'm a I'm a writer. I think the thing that I do the best is writing. And I will spend, I have spent, when I write, I will spend an hour sometimes on a single sentence. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I love breaking things down like that. And and the reason why is because I swear that we're missing out on a lot of what our language is about because we're just ignoring things. When in fact, if you sit down to write about it, oh my God, it just unfolds right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that this book is, is so important. I mean, honestly... A lot, many of us, we have, we want a lot of the same things, right? But we have different ideas just for how to get there. And if you really want to win over and connect with someone who's different from you, then the best way to do that is to focus on what you have in common first. Because we, we're being conditioned right now, I think, to believe that just because someone is in the opposite party or maybe even has a different view than you on a single issue, then we're not going to agree with them on anything. And that's not true. So in addition to being kind of an entertaining read, this book kind of opens your eyes to some of that manipulation and is also kind of a guide for rising above it and also connecting with people. You know, this book is so important for right now because what you just said is exactly what is going on inside our homes as well as our communities because I have been known for disconnecting from people because of thoughts or because of pictures because it's like, oh my God, I, I, I don't want to be associated with this because people are going to think bad of me. And, and we need leadership mm -hmm. books like this for us to kind of laugh about it and get back together. Yeah, because when you really break it down, what politics does is politics makes us fight with people we know in our real life on behalf of people that don't even know we exist. And it's pathetic when you break it down like that, right? But it's also accurate. And I think that, you know, we need to start seeing each other as human again. I think in this, in this book, I put a lot of my very, very personal stories. I talk very openly about things I've struggled with in this book, not just because a lot of it's, you know, there's some of the stories are very entertaining, but also because I think that vulnerability is a huge tool here. Mm -hmm. I think that being vulnerable makes it more likely that someone's going to have compassion for you and listen to you. So if you want to be seen as human, you have to be willing to show that you are a human. And that's what I do in this book. One of the healing steps that, that I've learned in, in a situation that, you know, such as this that we've had for the past 10 to 20 years is the fact that, you know, teach yourself to just go ahead and listen to what the other side is thinking. Just listen. That doesn't mean you have to participate. Just listen to what they're thinking. And I'll bet you you'll find ways to relate with them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just a single difference in, in, in viewpoint on one issue doesn't mean you're not going to find anything else to agree on. I used to like you until, and I love the way that you left it wide open because ghosting is a very huge thing right now, and, and people have got to break free of that and sit down and say, hey, look, we, we've got to face the future. Yeah, and, and, you know, we really do have a lot to lose. I mean, the, the conditioning of the two sides of this binary thinking, it works great for government, and it works great for media in terms of gaining more power and control. I mean, they can use division to get you to think it's a great idea to give up your own rights, for example. But if you really want to get along with and win over people so we can work together, you know, I mean, you, you really should want to because, you know, we're stronger when we're, when we're united. And also just because you, you can have a very strong disagreement with someone on one issue, totally can have a very strong disagreement, never going to agree. That's fine. But that doesn't mean there's not going to be another issue where you might agree because right now it's not even it, it, it's the problem is so far beyond just you know, oh, I'm I, not enough independent thinking. It's it's people can't even perceive independent thinking sometimes where if some people will think, OK, if you say something bad about Kamala, for example, then that must mean that you have this whole other list of views. You are these all these other things. We really just mean you have that one opinion about that one thing. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, when you bring up the, the subject of binary thinking, right away, that word right is something that I would instantly go to the dictionary, look it up, study it, see how we're acting with it. How can we make it a better word? How can we learn from it and things? So, I mean, that's, that's what you're planting here is you're planting things that we need to be thinking about and that we can activate. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it just like, it, it, my, I'm very likely be, or very lucky because I have so many different friendships with so many different people um, all over this, the political spectrum. And I, I, my life is richer because of all these relationships. I don't know where I would be without all these relationships. Yep. So I'm very, very, very lucky that I've, I get to see that firsthand. Um, and, and, you know, I really would encourage people to read this book because it really will kind of open your eyes to some of the tricks that, you know, the government and the media used to, to quite frankly, use your, manipulate you, use your own emotions against you. Yep. And, um, you know, what we have to lose and, and how to kind of see beyond that and, and connect with people who you think might have written you off otherwise. Wow. Wow. When you connect with people around the country, the separate regions, do you get to experience that in the in the way that every part of this country, doesn't matter what corner you're in, it's not going to be like somebody in the South versus somebody in the Pacific Northwest. It's a different way of living. Yes, and that's what, I mean, I actually wrote this book while I was on the tour for my first book because I was, I mean, I went all around the country. I mean, I, I was in North Carolina, but I also went to St. Louis, but I also yeah. went to Midland, Texas. I also went to Portland, Oregon. I went to McPherson, Kansas. I was everywhere, all these different walks of life, all these different people. And what I kept finding over and over and over again is that as different as these walks of life were, as different as these people were, as different as that an accountant in St. Louis is gonna be from a guy working in an oil rig out in Midland, many of us want a lot of the same things out of life. Many of us value a lot of the same things. And it wasn't just my experience, it was actually research that I did in the book that backs that up as well, that, you know, we do want a lot of the same things, but we just have different ideas of how to get there. And I think when you can remember that, it can be really helpful that just because, you know, in my case, I'm for very small government. So people will have the misconception of if you don't think the government is the best way to solve a problem, then that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't care about the problem. Right. It just means you have a different way of maybe going about solving it. Haven't we become that generation that lets others speak for us and then we get pissed off when they don't say it right? That's actually, that's yes, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, I think that, there, that that's definitely a huge issue, right? I think that we'd be better off with more independent thinking. I think we'd be better off with the ability to perceive independent thinking, but also just going back to seeing each other as humans. Yeah, yeah. Critical thinking once got a lot of love. I haven't heard too much about that lately. What, what's the story on that? Well, I write in my book that binary thinking is the enemy of critical thinking. Oh. And that's because you don't, once you've already picked a side or a lens, you don't have to think because all the thinking has already been done for you. You just go along with whatever your side's saying and you just kind of call it a day. The problem with that is when you stop thinking, that's how stupid things happen, right? And the problem with that is also that you miss out on re- not only relationships that could be fulfilling, but opportunities to work together. And also the ability to sort of think creatively. I'm better, my, I'm better, my, my show is better, my jokes are better, my, everything's better because I'm, nothing's off limits for me. I look at a, every situation with fresh eyes of, okay, what do I think about this thing this person said? Instead of like, oh, this person's on the bad team, so I know that I have to have this take. Or my side's saying this about this, so I can only make jokes within this vein. There's so much freedom in freeing your mind, and this book really shows you how to do that. Has the structure of a joke changed in the way that it's it's more of a statement? In other words, get to the point, sell it, move on. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I, I think I tell a, a wide variety of jokes mm-hmm. in my live shows. <laughs> Yeah, and and the reason why is because it seems like I'm hearing more statements these days from a lot of comedians more than just, you know, sitting down and and maybe maybe it's just I come from the old school way of doing comedy where it's storytelling. But I mean, but it's like boom, 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 boom. You're laughing your ass off. You really are. But but it's like, wow, it's changed. Yeah, my well, my my show involves a lot of storytelling. I think storytelling, I mean, my show, my book. Um, So I I definitely agree. I, I really like to do that. I really like to do the storytelling and. And I think that that's just, you know, uh, 
fun. And, and also, like I said, there's so much power and vulnerability and, and showing that you're human and the jokes about things that you've been through, whether you can relate to or you can see yourself in that situation or or you can't, you can't imagine being in that situation. And that's just such an opportunity for us to connect as humans. And I think that there, there, there's now, there's this issue with people not wanting the laugh or the connection so much as wanting the clapter where they want to say something the audience is going to agree with and everyone will clap for them. Yep. I, I don't know how you handle hecklers. I really don't know because I mean that that is one of the greatest uh, interruptions at at a, at a comedy show. In other words, it, it's going to take down the energy of something that where you're trying to come in there and allow people to just cut loose. Yeah, I mean hecklers. Well, I, I know what I'm. It's, it's part of my job. So usually, if people heckle me, they regret it pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm the professional in the situation. So <laughs> they regret it pretty fast. Wouldn't you say that you are an extension to your father's teachings in the way that, you know, you're, you're teaching us now to be yourself? Yes, my dad always taught me to, you know, think for yourself. And that's, I dedicated the book to my dad because it's my father who taught me to think for myself and my husband who accepts the market risk of me doing so. <laughs> it's very risky for me to come out with a book like this. Um, especially in such a contentious time where everything is one side versus the other. Uh, I got a lot on the line for this book. I got a baby. I'm releasing a baby in February. Those are expensive, right? Yeah. Um, and I'm spending so much of my time, you know, with this and, and I'm, I'm, I'm really wanting this to sell well and all that. A lot of risk in that. But I, I didn't do this despite the fact that we're in such a contention, hyper partisan, politicized time. I did it because we are. And people really need this book, even if they don't think they need this book. You're so right. You're so how right. How I get how I get them to read the book is 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 another question. But I promise anybody, if if you get one, that you won't regret it because it's an entertaining read as well. Well, people have pulled inside. In other words, it's not that they've become introverts. They've become they they're closing themselves into their own little section of the world. And it's books like this that teaches them that hey, look, I I, I guess I'm not the only one who thinks this way. I I can be a little bit more open. Yeah, absolutely. Or I'm not the only one who's gone through this. Yes. And, and I have people who privately will tell me these things. And, and it's, you know, and that, and that I think that's a step closer. So I really think the more open and honest we can be, the better off we're going to be. And, and just don't let media or a politician tell you how to feel about your neighbor when you could go talk to your neighbor yourself. <laughs> so true. So true. I mm -hmm. wish that I could be a fly on the wall when you were sitting down to write this book because you had to have been talking to yourself, bringing it from the core, questioning yourself. Okay, is that too far? Is that not far enough? How can I get this to where it becomes effective? Yeah. I mean, I, I, but I think it's great because I was writing this on tour in green rooms i mean <laughs> in hotels in airport lounges and i do meet and greets at my show where I'm, I'm i'm meeting all these people who come to the show but i'm also meeting waitresses at restaurants i'm meeting you know I'm, I'm talking to all these different people so i mean i was really living the book as i was writing it hmm. you know you, you you shot me back to my last two books i wrote them in a radio station production room because it was just that place of creative energy and and every place that you you were talking about you know the, a green room my god there's energy in there that the average person does not understand but when you step into it you're going oh my god i feel the energy of past things here yeah I, and, and i mean i just I, I just it kept reinforcing what i thought was true which is that wow this place is different than the last place i went but we really still want a lot of the same things Wow, there's so many different things inside this book that, that I, I just want to cover. And the reason why is because you're bringing up things such as, you know, biology is sexist. And I mean, I, I love subjects like that because you've got the courage to say, here it is. How do you want to talk about it? Let's start a talk, a talk right now about it. Yeah, absolutely. I wrote two chapters about gender. And one of them was kind of criticizing some of the things that right the right says. And some of the other one criticizing some of the things that the left says. Yeah. So... It, it, I just made sure I'd have everybody mad at me, right? But I think that, honestly, one does not negate the other. And quietly, people have nuanced views on this nuanced subject. Even people who are very left-wing, who are women, don't want to be called people with vaginas, for example. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I think that I, I show polling that shows people have nuanced views on this subject. But people are afraid to put themselves out there. So what I'm doing in this book is I'm starting the conversation. I'm putting it out there. And again, I'm doing so. It's also a fun, funny chapter. I 
humiliate myself with a lot of the stuff I talk about. And I do that also because it's self-deprecation. I think there's a lot of power in that as well Yeah. Um, in terms of getting people to listen to you. Oh, I know I've lost a lot of podcast numbers due to the fact that I became more open with my religious speaking. And, and man, you should have seen those numbers just run away from me. It's like, really? I didn't say anything offensive, people. Come on. Well, that's just the idea of it. Is it's just that one thing should not be enough. And I do write a chapter about religious in this religion in this book because I am not religious myself. I wish I could be. I hope to get there at some point in my life. But people who are religious and people who are not religious have often mis they have they have they have misconceptions yeah. about each other. Yeah. People will think that because I'm not religious sometimes that I don't have any values, I don't have any morals, and that's not true. People will sometimes think that religious people are judgmental. Um, and that's as I have very, some friends that, um, that are very close friends of mine that are very, very Christian or very, very Catholic or whatever else. I know that that's not true from them. So that really it's it's about getting to know people and, and realizing and, 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 and looking instead of being judgmental and looking curiously at your interactions with people because, you know, I love to be wrong at this point because yeah. if I'm wrong, <laughs> then I've learned something. You know, I'd love to say, oh, I never thought of it that way before. <laughs> or, oh, wow, I, I thought this this way about this one person. And I call myself out for times I've been wrong about people in my book. I call myself out for, for all kinds of things in my own book. What I almost lost myself due to some of my own biases. Um, my own husband, he's more conservative than I am. And I thought I would not be interested in someone who was so clean cut like he was. And... I would have missed out on this wonderful marriage, this wonderful partnership, and this baby that's being born in February if I didn't keep my mind more open. So uh, as risky as it is for me to write this book, and this is definitely a very risky book, I talk about a lot of controversial subjects, and I do it in a way that is not within the media-approved way of one side versus the other. So I'm not going to get the same play as a lot of other books that are. Very risky, but equally as important, if not actually I'd say much more important. What I love about this book, Kat, is the fact that that you put yourself in a position of where you, one thing, and it's, this is my heart speaking, you're not going to grow up to become a grumpy old person because you're getting it out there right now because you're you're cleansing yeah. everything in you right now saying hey this is what's right and wrong let's talk about it now so because you know you always hear of grumpy old man syndrome it's because they kept it in all those years and now they think they've got a voice yeah i definitely i guess i'll be a very happy little old lady yes yes i yeah i'm definitely very open and, and you know but i couldn't do it honestly just for the sake of myself i couldn't because i i do I, I, you know, I, 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 there are things I, 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 I'm very, this is a huge risk to put out a book like this, but, and I wouldn't take that risk just for myself. I'm doing it because I think that this is what we need right now. Yeah. I yeah. really, really do. And the more people that read this, um, there's something in here for everyone. And the more people that read us, honestly, the better off that will be. So many book critics say that, oh, authors write and release books because it's very selfish. Uh-uh. It's selfless. No. Whereas it's selfless. No. No, I'm not getting rich off books, guys. Yeah. I don't know if you guys, <laughs> most people have absolutely no idea of how this works. Um, I do hope to make some money, especially because babies are expensive. And quite frankly, also, if this book doesn't do well, I'm going to see it as confirmation that I can't be a, a mom and have a career. I mean, I'm so terrified because I, I'm not going to lie to you. Promoting a book is hard. Promoting a book while you're pregnant is so hard. <laughs> I am. I don't. I'm not operating at the same capacity because I'm growing a human right now. Um, but I, I'm do. I just think this issue is too important. I really think we have way too much to lose, both in terms of our rights and our freedoms, but also in terms of our relationships with each other that could be really valuable. That's the book I want to read. Growing a human right now. That's got to be your next book because I really want to know what it was like to go through this in this age that we're currently living in. It's crazy. I found out I was pregnant the day that Trump was convicted. <laughs> so that was this. I found out pregnant. I was pregnant that morning. So I mean, it's just been. Think of the whirlwind that we've had since then with Biden. The debate. The debate. The debate between Biden and Trump was the day I first heard the heartbeat. Wow. Right. So wow. I've had all these. You know, this has just been an absolute political whirlwind and. That's what this book is about, too, because there's always human stuff going on, no matter how loud the politics are of the day. This election year, November 5th, this election day this year, is the 10-year anniversary of the day that my mom died. Wow. I'm going to be thinking about that on, on this day because it's a huge milestone to not have a mom 
for 10 years, especially as I'm now, you know, about to be someone's mom myself. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that it's, it's so important to remind ourselves of that. And this book really is a guide for how to remind yourself of that, to be wise to the manipulation and, you know, to, to connect with people who might have written you off. Wow. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Kat. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you so much. Well, no, thank you so much for this book. It's going to teach a lot of people to take the right steps. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This is a great conversation. Well, you be brilliant today, okay, Kat? Thank you.